Good morning and welcome to Holy Innocence Morning Prayer this Wednesday, February 17th. Um, today is Ash Wednesday, first day of Lent, as I'm sure you are all aware, but happy to be joining you in prayer this morning. Um, as always, we are just here a couple minutes early to give everybody a little bit of time to find the link and get ready for worship. Um, but as you come in, I would love if you would leave a comment, let me know that you're here so I can say hi to you. Um, this isn't my normal time, so hopefully some new faces um, as well as the regulars. Um, but yeah, just let me know that you're here and I'll say hi either before or after the service. Good morning, Carolyn, I'm glad that you're here. If y'all would like to follow along um, for our readings, today we'll be saying Psalm 95, which you can find on page 724 of your Book of Common Prayer. Um, our Old Testament reading comes from the Book of Jonah, um, chapter 3, verse 1, through chapter 4, verse 11. It's a little bit of a longer reading. Um, and our Gospel reading today comes from Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. Um, and I'll announce this again um, before we get started, but if you want to go ahead and get turned to the right pages, um, that's for you. Um, we'll be having also a service at noon um, for Ash Wednesday, so if you have some time in your workday and want to get logged on, um, we invite you to do that. Good morning, James. Um, glad you're here. Um, and then otherwise, yeah, I hope you all are ready for this new liturgical season and getting excited about how you're going to connect with God um, and be intentional about time of prayer. And, you know, by being here, you are already doing that. Um, our readings, again, are going to be Psalm 95, which you can find on page 724 of your Book of Common Prayer. Um, Old Testament reading comes from Jonah, chapter 3, verse 1, through chapter 4, verse 11. And the gospel reading today comes from Luke chapter 18, um, verses 9 through 14. Um, so hopefully you can get turned to those pages or just follow along, um, whatever is more convenient for you. Um, again, please comment, let me know that you're here so I can say hi either before or after the service and everyone can, you know, say hi to everyone, um, let you know that they're here, that you're here. Um, and yeah, we'll get started here in just a minute. So thanks for being here. Um, last time before we get started, Psalm 95 on page 724 of your Book of Common Prayer. Um, Jonah chapter 3, uh, verse 1 through chapter 4, verse 11. And Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. Again, today is Ash Wednesday, first day of Lent. So uh, whether you're joining us for worship later or worshiping, thinking about it um, at your own home, you know, I hope it's a great liturgical season for you to connect with God um, and that you get involved in everything we've got going on at Holy Innocence. Um, and I will turn off the sound on my computer. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and flesh shall see it together. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. So turning to page 82, let's say the Jubilate together. So it's page 82 of your Book of Common Prayer. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Now turning to page 724, um, we will say Psalm 95 together. 
which should look pretty familiar to the Venite to everyone. Um, yeah, that's page 724. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the height of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not your hearts as your forebears did in the wilderness, at Meribah and on that day at Massa, when they tempted me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Forty years long, I detested that generation and said, this people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Jonah, chapter 3, verse 1, through chapter 4, verse 11. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock, shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is this not what I said while I was still in my own country? This is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God, and merciful, and slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort, so Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah, so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 people who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
turning to page 91, let's say Canticle number 15, The Song of Mary, together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers to Abraham and his children forever. A reading from the book of Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like the other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turning to page 92, we continue now with canticle number 16, the Song of Zechariah. That's page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Turning now to page 96, let's say the Apostles' Creed together. So that's page 96 of your Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing, and you have made and forgive all the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Turning to page 99, let's say a collect for peace together. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In a prayer for mission on page 100. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue now with a litany for these days, which you can respond, Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. Let us pray to the Lord, who is our refuge and stronghold, for the health and well-being of our nation, for those working on the front lines for our care, and for all who work in the service industry, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. For the isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them and their vulnerability. Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. For our homes and families, our schools and young people, and all in any kind of need or distress, Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. For a blessing on our local community, that our neighborhoods may be places of trust and friendship, where all are known and cared for, Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. To close, let's say the general thanksgiving together, which you can find on page 101 of your Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. 
thank you all for being here with me this morning to pray. Um, good morning to everyone, either watching now, watching later. Um, good morning, John. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Judy. Good morning, Ernestine. Good morning, Trisha and Pat. And good morning, Sunny. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you're all having a great start to the Lenten season. Um, we'd love to see you at noon for worship um, or later this evening. Um, but otherwise, please know that you are all in my prayers um, and in the prayers of everyone at Holy Innocence, I think. Um, and I hope that you have a great day um, and that we get to see you tomorrow at 9 for morning prayer with Bill. So see you all later. Have a great day.